Dear colleagues and friends, welcome to Prelude, an interview series about opera produced by Atelier d'Excellence for educational purposes. The current episode is supported by Opera Wire. Francisco Salazar, publisher of Opera Wire, joins today the panel of interviewers. Welcome, Francisco. Thank you, Ari. Our honorable guest, our honorable guest for today's Prelude is one of the most complete artists of the world operatic stage, internationally acclaimed soprano, Miss Nino Machaidze. Welcome, welcome, Nino. We are very happy to have you with us today. Hi, hello. I'm happy too, and thank you for invitation. Our pleasure. I would like also to present Mr. Sunny Boyd Ladla, AD Creative Director, and we are going to have today also Ricardo Estrada, the maestro, uh, AD, artistic consultant, who disappeared for a while due to technical reasons, I guess, <laughs> but he's going to join us soon. Uh, and uh, Sunny Boy, what do you suggest? Shall we go to the second question for Nino? Because Ricardo is not here to start with his question. Yes, I, yes, I think so. <laughs> uh, or welcome, maybe Nino. I can. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> I think Ricardo is Thank here, you. so let's give Thank him you. a second. We apologize to Nino and the audience for this, 
but on the world of the internet, these things happen, unfortunately. Ricardo, you are back. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what happened. I, I, I'm in a hotel here in Madrid, and I don't know. They sat down, I don't know what they did. Now it's, it's okay, I think. <laughs> yeah. yes. We already pre presented you to the public, and we are looking very much forward to hear your very first question for uh, Nino. Okay, it's an honor to start this interview with a wonderful artist as Nino. It is. Uh, first of all, start uh, uh, previous my my first question. I will I will love to to ask you what do you feel being here in our country here in Spain? You are in Madrid. How is treating Madrid to you? <laughs> So um, it's absolutely wonderful. First of all, I have to say that I am in love, completely in love with Spain and, uh, of course, with Madrid. And incredibly coincidence that I, it, it, I think it's been nice to say that I've been here uh, exactly seven years ago. And exactly seven years ago, my first kid, Alessandro, uh, was four months old. And uh, our trip in Madrid was his first uh, trip with a flight and everything. And now I'm here after seven years with my baby girl, Elena, and she's also four months old. So oh, wow. incredible. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I think but then, incredible. what do you need? How many possibilities was there? I mean, I <laughs> true. <laughs> 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 So uh, I wanted to ask you, where, where, when are you going to come to Barcelona? Because you know I'm from Barcelona. Um, <laughs> so yeah. that means that then you will have your third baby, maybe, when coming again. <laughs> <laughs> Ricardo, you are too bold. <laughs> um, boy and girl. And I always wanted two kids. It was like my dream. And now that, thanks God, I have two kids and a boy and girl, I think I'm happy like this, so. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Well, never, never say, never say never. I was I about tell to say you, that. <laughs> for experience, never say never. <laughs> you never know the future. <laughs> so, yes, I know Madrid and uh, it's pain and it's so nice after such difficult year uh, with pandemic yeah. and everybody closed home and everything closed and like mm, the situation was so sad and also seeing the cities empty was so sad and now i have to say that seeing the the madrid full of life and i have to say more than milano because i mean i've been i've been there before coming here and uh, was not like that yeah. here it's more love and it's wonderful to see that all the restaurants are open and uh, of course, also it's important that everybody is protecting and with the masks and um, also very important that opera house is open and they are doing everything in a, such a professional way because we are tested twice a week. Yeah. Uh, and this is very important. This is very important to keep open things, but still uh, with the, in the safe way and protecting and, uh, you know, this is this is very, very important. Happy all this life it needs to awesome. yeah yeah it's a very life city of course i really love it also um so my question my question uh is yeah. how and when you decide to um make i mean to be a singer because i know that you were studying uh, so young in tbilisi and you were studying also piano brava uh, you were yeah. studying also flute Bravissima. So, yeah. so what was the thing that uh, you, I don't know that came to you, came to you in order to say, no, I want to be a singer or, or I love to sing? How was? So, um, first of all, I think it's very inter interesting to say that in Georgia we have a very, very big, uh, musical tradition, and so we have, are not musicians. Uh, they still try to give musical advice to, to their kids. And so almost everybody, um, I, I hope that also now it's this, but when I was a kid, for sure was like that. So, um, 
so still they 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 were bringing kids in the old school uh, and to play piano or violino or um, some instruments just to take musical education but in my case was also um, I mean, it was difficult to not see what I really wanted to do in my life, <laughs> because actually, <laughs> since I was like five or six, I remember that I was like, no stopping singing. It was like, I think it was so disturbing for everybody because like, I was like singing all the time. <laughs> and sometimes I remember that my brother was like, please, can you just not sing for five minutes? And I was like, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> Even my no was sing sound. So I think sometimes you really understand when you have some talent on your on the front, you know, a kid with the talent. Like when some kid is you know that has like painting and painting in in such beautiful way and you can understand that that kid has that talent. So in my case, um fortunately my mother and my father they saw that I had this kind of talent. So I was just singing, singing, singing whole time and uh, repeating. And um, so it's why, um, of course, from the beginning, they brought me to, to play piano because it was too soon to sing. But then uh, when I was eight years old and I remember my piano teacher, there was a little problem that when I was playing, some notes that I was not playing, I was singing. So, so I remember that he was saying like, no, these things you have to still play. Why are you singing? And I was like, but it's much better, no? So I, he had this problem actually. It was like, and so I remember that he told uh, to my mother and he said like, I think it's a time. I mean, you don't have to wait anymore. I think this kid is she's ready to sing so why you don't change the door and just you know go go to ask to the door next door because there is a um, vocal uh teacher so so like this uh, we changed the class <laughs> and i was eight years old when i started to sing uh, opera so really opera um i've never been in a choro and a kid choro or something no like right like this, uh, I started to to study opera, and my first piece on stage that I did with piano was Oscar Salia from Balonskera. So <laughs> I was only eight. So I think it was very easy to understand that I had to sing. So this is <laughs> nice. <laughs> You have mute the. I don't phone. hear you. Yeah. Now, now, yeah. Now you can hear me. Yes. I just wanted to tell about Georgia that this country has some magic element and produces so many great singers. We previously had uh, George Kaknidis and Ketevan Kemokiewicz, and now we have you. And what is the element that in this country that helps uh, young people turn to culture, turn to opera? Is there something that uh, helps in the tradition of your country? Excuse me, I, did, I didn't hear very well the, the question. Can you hear me better now? We still have problem, yeah, I think. Yeah, better. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry for this. I, I asked, I said that uh, Georgia has a magic element and produces so many great opera singers. We previously hosted George Kaknidze, Ketevan Kemokiewicz, and now we have you. Uh, what is the special uh, element in the culture and the tradition of this country that helps young people turn to opera and gives them the opportunity also to start a career in this field? So, uh, I think it's something that I think we have some... Uh, can you hear me? I can mm -hmm. hear you. We have some small, but uh, is it any better? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to know if you hear me because I lost you before. I'm sorry for this. It's my connection, probably. But I can hear you very well. I can hear you well. Okay. 
also i i mean i i think we have something in our blood because like all country they are just everybody are singing <laughs> it's, it's incredible it's incredible really because also if you go in Georgia, you will see this that uh, for example there is a party okay and uh, like birthday party or something and we all like travel around the table and everybody are eating. one person takes guitar and uh, everybody then everybody starts singing so it's just it's just incredible and also i think this is that um, uh, you can start to learn uh, uh, music in such young age because there are existing the schools that where you can go and you can start already musical and opera serious opera education at that age you know it, it's very helpful because growing up already on stage and already with a serious education and also um, in a conservatory uh, they have a, a studio a studio and i remember that we were performing like uh, um, acts from opera we did like fourth act of rigoletto i remember and all or whole opera so this is mm -hmm. very 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 good uh, this this kind of um, this way of teaching let's say like this because we are growing up not only in the class but already on so this is very important. thank you very much mino and thank you ricardo um if i hope you can hear me well now i hope i resolved my issue <laughs> with the sound perfect. great perfect very clear so, so since we spoke for georgia that was a very important chapter of your life, certainly because you were born there and took the first lessons and made the first steps. But uh, also the rest of the beginning of your career is like a fairy tale story because you found your, yourself very quickly, just at your 21 years, uh, you found yourself from, from Tbilisi at the Academia del Teatro La Scala. And very soon after this, you covered Gilda at Teatro La Scala, and you also sang a dress rehearsal next to Leo Nucci. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, did, did you ever feel, feel sorry, overwhelmed in front of such a, cha a challenge? Because you were still a kid, you were very young. How did you face this challenge and uh, how did your years in the Academia in Italy prepare you for your international breakthrough afterwards? Yeah. So, that, this, is, this is a good question because everybody think that of course uh, such a challenge and such a, a huge stage you know and uh, and important opera house can stay and of course it can be but in my case it was not like this because probably because um, that was exactly what I wanted it was exactly what I always dreamed so my desire to uh, do things in the right way to do things well to success to finally keep that opportunity you know and uh, like that desire was such big that then there was no place you know to be there was no place um, scared i was not scared let's say like this in uh, in easy way and um, first of all i was not scared because technically i was ready and this, I have to say that this is very, very important because um, somebody can think that, um, yeah, technique, okay, yeah, but by, by goodness, goodness, it will be fine. Okay, but you have nerve only if technically you are right, if technically you are safe, strong. Only after that, you can go on stage and you can be happy because if technically you are not um, strong okay and you don't feel that you have strong technique you will never be happy on stage because it will be too scary too scary and so when i arrived from, from georgia i already had my technique i i was completely uh, sure about what i was doing i was about absolutely sure about my technique it was very solid 
and is the exactly the same one and now I never changed and uh, then I always dreamed to go in Italy, I always dreamed to sing uh, on stage of La Scala. And uh, when that opportunity came, I said like, oh my God, this is really happening. So now, now I will just do what I know to do. I will go on stage. And you know, Rigoletto I already had um, have done in Georgia. So it was not my school, let's say. Of course it was debut in La Scala. But I said like, this part fits me perfectly. So it's nothing to be here. Okay, so I'm here, and uh, just I will I will try to do my best, and um, and yeah, this is what I always dream. So I just have to be happy. So yeah, honestly, I was not scared. I was just happy. And about and about Academia of La Scala, uh, um, I I I think I become an artist in that academy. Because as I said, I came in Italy and I already had very safe and very strong technique. Um, but as I was super young, uh, probably, um, you know, the interpretation, the, all that to understand also the style of uh, Bel Canto or the Ritmo or Rossini or, you know, or Mozart. Okay. All these kind of things uh, I didn't know. And so, uh, with the help of Leila Genshe, especially Leila Genshe, because I will always be thankful to her, because she really teach me how to become an artist. And, uh, she, uh, and I understood from her that there is a difference between uh, being a singer and between being an artist. And I think in, in Academia of La Scala, I become an artist. So... I will be always. That's happy. really, that's really Thank great you. to hear that you were so sure about yourself and that yeah. this security comes out of knowledge and good preparation. It's a very good advice for our audience and our seniors who are here today. Awesome. Sunny boy, <laughs> since uh, since you, you you I mean uh, you kind of covered my question, but as well, um, I want on the question that I was about to ask, it was about your your debut of jumping in in Salzburg at the last minute. What was the situation? If you can just take it through, were you ready to sing the role? What was going on in your mind? And what is your advice to young singers who are um, who might have the opportunity when the opportunity comes? What is your advice to them? And also as well, just to talk about teachers because you touch about uh, Leila Gencha as well. I wanted to know, were you always with one teacher your whole life? and? What, what was your, your 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 state in terms of having a person who was guiding you throughout your career? So I will answer first the last, the last part of the question. Yes, <laughs> I I have still the same technique that I had since I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. I never because for me this technique now it's so solid and uh, and. This technique uh, gives me the possibility always to go on stage happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I just never changed because there was no, it was not needed. And, uh, and also, fortunately, I've been lucky also as well um, that when I was inside of Academia of La Scala, um, we had um, uh, Luciana Serra and she was teaching us mm -hmm. techniques. But she liked me very much, and she, so she 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 just uh, she was happy. and so we were studying, and it was very um, natural, and uh, nothing changed. So in my technique, let's say this, and this was very very good, and I've been very happy because I've never been confused, and uh, this is because. I always say also to my students, when you find your way, when you find the way of technique where you feel sure, where you feel comfortable, when you see singing and you feel healthy, and when you feel that voice is healthy and fresh and sounds perfectly, and you can finish the opera, long opera, and you can start again, this means that you have a good technique. So don't change it. It's not necessary to change only because you are growing up or because um, for curiosity. 
because that kind of thing can just can confuse Absolutely. and confusion is never a good thing on stage because fall you will get tired mentally as well because stage is not easy place and it's a huge challenge every single time so you really have to be convinced on what are you doing when you're doing where you are sending the work how so only after this you will be happy as i said already so when carry we don't and uh, because it was not necessary i never this about me and my I will be always grateful for the guest and and I was her first so we like grow up together. Oh, that's awesome. I was twenty seven and I was eight. So oh, wow. <laughs> and, yeah, now she is absolutely the best teacher in the whole Asia and absolutely I sent her deep love. Yeah. And then the next you said you what was the it was it was about the the Juliet at Salzburg festival. Yes, so Juliet. So, um, I remember I was in Alaska and I was singing Janis Kiki. And after Janis Kiki, um, they came the direction from Salzburg. They they came and they said like, oh, okay, um, I we we find out next Juliet. I was like, okay. And they said, um, so do you want to be our Juliet? Are you ready? And I was like, I didn't know the part at all. Okay, I only knew the Je veux vivre. <laughs> that there was a that I always found. And okay. But because they said like, okay, we found our next Juliet. So you want to be our Juliet? And uh, I, um, are, you, are you ready? And I was like, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I said like, of course I'm ready. <laughs> When we start rehearsal in two weeks, I so I said I'm ready, and I was I was completely sure that it was right decision because when that kind of opportunity comes, I mean you really have to show are ready, and because I knew that uh, Aria was so perfect for. And of course, I knew the opera. I heard the whole opera, so I knew that um, as it was written, it was not too heavy, or it was not uh, Durandot. So <laughs> it's why I was sure that that all uh, was going to sweep me. And I said, yes, in two weeks <laughs> I will be there, and I will know the role. And 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 I, and I remember the day after. I went to the uh, uh, in Duomo in Milano. I took the score and uh, like I spent two weeks of 20 hour, 24 hour a day learning that role. And uh, and I did. And I arrived there and, and I knew. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> it's important to, of course, of course, um, uh, young like advice to young uh, singers no mm. you never have to accept when you are not sure about uh the very important thing that if the opera is good for vocal cords for your vocal cords or not this of course you don't have to do never 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 because really uh a wrong role can really damage our vocal so this is very important to know. And uh, it's very important to not accept when something you know is bigger than you. Uh, bigger than you, I mean that it's, it's you are not ready. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you have to accept, you have to be uh, like I did. You have to do like, like I did only when you know, when you are sure that that role will be perfect for you. And I knew this. I also have like some strange sense, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but I always feel uh, when something will be right for me and I always feel when something will be wrong for me. So until now, thanks God, <laughs> and it's already, already, so I, in my debut I was 16 and now I am 38. So in all these years, I never made mistake in a role. 
So never, never, never. And I have to say that um, while after, after I did the Lombardi in Monte Carlo, you one, one month ago, mm. okay, I started receiving uh, um, proposals from very important opera houses uh, for very dramatical operas. And I'm just refusing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so oh, I know, I know that um, that will be uh, the reason why I will not go back in that opera houses uh, for a uh, for a few years, but it's, it's totally okay because the most important thing only the roles that with our vocal cords perfectly and never accept more difficult, more difficult, let's say more dramatic, okay, roles that can be damaging. So I, I never do this because I love this job too much. Yeah. And I love singing playing on stage just too much. So I will not I will not, not accept something that I know that it's not for, good for me just because I want to uh, some to go back in some yeah. very important opera houses. So this is very important. Uh, for young uh, singers, never accept some, something because somebody told you, or somebody is insisting, or uh, just because you want to think in uh, some very important topic. No, accept it only if you are sure that it's perfect for you. Oh, wow, that is so profound, my God. And you know, we work with singers on a daily basis. And this is often mostly a, a question that is getting asked, that we are being asked. What do I say? Yes, but I need money, but I need, but coming from a person who is out there saying this information, it is absolutely so, so encouraging. And really it, just to learn to say no, if something is not right for you, is so important to hear it from somebody like you, who's in a business, who started to see at a young age and you already knew from the beginning, what was right for you? I think that's so profound. And yeah. our singers, um, I'm sure they are taking notes. <laughs> no, because it's very important. It's very important to know, to say yes, when it, when the opportunity is there. And uh, yeah. not lose the opportunity because you are scared, because you don't know the role, because you think that you you don't have time. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. You will use 24 hours to learn it. So okay, this is very because that kind of opportunities cannot come back anymore. Yeah. Okay. So this is very important to catch the moment, okay? But as well, it's very important to know to say no, because that kind of thing can damage, can be the last one, the last that you will do. So why? Yeah. It's, it's very, very important. It's very uh, important to think, to think that, um, to decide. Okay. If, you know, to know what you want to do. You want to sing only for one year or you want to sing for 20 years? Yeah, okay. absolutely. I do have a question about, about saying no and then saying yes, because a lot of times singers, they start with a certain repertoire and then they get boxed into that, that certain repertoire. So, you know, if you're a soprano, you'll be singing Traviata and more Traviatas and they won't let you do anything else. At what point do you say no to those traviatas and how do you move on to more diverse repertoire? I mean, you've you've sung such a range, um, and you've been you've been given that opportunity. But a lot of singers they only get traviatas, for example, or Don Giovanni's, but they don't move from there. How how do you how, what do you do there? So um, this is this is very very interesting question, and the thing is that the mistake, let's say, like this, is not. Um, uh, that, uh, that what you do anymore because you are singing too many traviatas. Probably it was wrong to accept traviata very soon. It's why very very important to go slowly and to not uh, do some roles right from the beginning. Few roles they they. They need to be like they. You, they need that you to arrive to that role. You can't start 
part with dead dolls. Okay, for example, I waited to do Traviata until I was 30. And I remember that I was asked to do Traviata since I was 24. But I was saying, no, 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 no. Because there is thousand things that I can do before Traviata. Traviata, it has to be the road I will arrive. But I don't want to start with Traviata. This is because if you do this, you know, in our journey, uh, the message that you give, okay, opera directors, they, they receive that message. So if you give the message that you are singing lyrical roles, but you are too young for that roles, and you know that you are too young for that roles, but still, if you give that message that you are ready, they will give you that role, and you will sing once, and you will sing twice. And if you will sing in the right way, the good way, then everybody will ask you Traviata. And so there is no way to go out. And so sometimes you have to refuse also because you know that that very hard and lyrical dramatic role, you will sing in the right way, okay? And then you know that everybody will ask you again and again and again and again, again that role. Okay, you will be not able to refuse anymore. So this is, don't accept the roles like Traviata too soon. Think the things before, okay? Start with the more, let's say, if you are Lirico Leggero, start, start with Elisir d'Amore, Don Pasquale. So like this, you will grow up in a beautiful way. Okay, and then you will arrive. Traviata, but you start with that, then nobody will ask you any more again. And so this means that you just jump one step. This is. So it's always better to go step by step, step by step. And the, the, the why, I, when I said that I'm not accepting the two, two lyrical, dramatical roles that now I'm asked to, it's not because I'm worried that I will in a beautiful, in beautiful way that was. No, I'm worried then if I will accept that role and I will in a beautiful way that was, then nobody will give me any more Luisa Miller. Nobody will give me any more Rossini, for example, and also Traviata or Mimi, because I will give the message that now I'm political drama. So this is, I don't want to give that message. And so it's why I'm not accepting that was. Okay. So would you say having a plan and knowing exactly which, which direction you want to take is, in, is important, especially for the young singers, you know, uh, we were just talking to a very, so, so talented soprano. And then she kept on mentioning um, uh, 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 bigger roles than she's supposed to do. And we were like, oh, but you do, Susanna, or you do, Rosetta. And she's like, oh, no, but I want to try Countess. I want to try, we're like, so we find ourselves in a position where we don't know what to say and how to say, because we don't want to interfere with what the teacher is doing and the singer is is wishing to do. What do you then say in that situation with that, with, that, with those kind of students? And also, I guess my question was, is it important to have a group of people that are there to guide you to the right direction? And also the singer should have a vision where and how the career should go. So, you know, this is very important to, we always have to listen to ourselves, listen to our body, because our body gave us messages. And I always, always, always tell to my students, why you arrived so late to me? What you were doing? in the last three years, why you arrive at that point. I that, hmm? almost without voice. So I mean, when you when you sing, okay, and you are singing uh, one aria, okay, and you finish and you feel good. This is message that that aria is good for you. If teacher will give you some other aria, let's say. And you sing that aria and you finish and you are without voice, completely. 
So this means that that one is not good for you. So why you have to think that the other day and the second time? Refuse. Don't do it anymore. And also, also, also about the teachers. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, a lot of young singers, they don't understand when they are hurting themselves. And they are studying and studying with the same person for months and for years until they are have very big. So it's important to understand before everything becomes dramatic. When you finish and you feel tired vocally, okay, this means that something wrong was, or you were not supporting with diaphragm or not breathing enough, or you were pushing, you were screaming, or you weren't singing the low body. There is a lot of things that can be wrong, okay? And then everything will went in a bad way. So, about choosing recovery, we just have to listen to our body, what our body says. And when we think something, we feel good. And when we sing something, other th other things, we feel bad. That's it. This is so. When you feel good, think things. Don't think. Don't think that one person can get everything. It's impossible. It's just impossible. That's it. Thank you very much, Nino. Thank you, and Sunny Boy. Uh, Nino, you have performed uh, with remarkable success on the greatest states of the world, on both sides of the Atlantic, as we say, from uh, your singing home, as you call it, the Teatro La Scala, where everything started from, to LA Opera, San Francisco Opera, the Metropolitan Opera of New York. Uh, do you find any differences between working uh, in Europe and in the United States? And uh, do you have some uh, preferable theaters that you wish to sing at? I want to tell you. I want to ask you which is your favorite one because I know that you love a lot of them. So, would you like to share with us about the circumstances in one of those places, each one of those places, and uh, then about the theaters that you like singing at? Yeah. So, oh, how this happened actually? But Los Angeles Opera become one one opera house that is always in my heart. It's like, um, I can say that it's my favorite because it will be like, I will like, I will offend the others because I mean, I, I love a lot of opera houses and the people work. But yeah, but let's say the um, Los Angeles Opera has like special place in my, in my heart. And uh, about the audience, um, the thing that I noticed, I remember, that um, when when I when I sing when we sing uh, comical operas in United States, they just laugh so much. They 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 really they are really having fun, lot of fun in United States. This doesn't happen in every European opera house. I don't know why. But uh, sometimes in, in Europe, it's more difficult to make audience uh, laugh. <laughs> I don't know why, but this is, this is, this is like this. Um, sometimes yes, but sometimes no. And, and I remember that the same production that I did in the United States and then I did in Europe, I remember that in the same points in the United States, they were laughing like crazy whole time. And, and in Europe, no. So I don't know why, but I mean, of course, it's not like this every every time. But but well, the thing that I saw that, uh, yeah, uh, in United States, they like more comical operas. And probably in Europe, they like more serious operas. This is my sensation. I don't know. But I think it's, it's like that. Very nice. About the working conditions are, are a little bit different how the theatres uh, handle the situations and uh, create the schedules, the, the circumstances of the work in anything, in the working conditions. Is it easier or similar? I don't think that's a big difference. I mean, it's, it's 
it's beautiful when some opera houses just have such incredibly teams working inside you know so yeah it's just uh, let's say the opera house it's anyway it's a magical place but few ones are more magical than others but anyway um i don't think that there is a differences between working way no this no. thank you very much well wow well, i i am just so uh amused about all the experiences you had <laughs> and you know when we had a conversation actually i think this this would be a very appropriate questions for our for our singers when we had our conversation, you talked about the role that you're currently doing now, learning it in like, I think you had two weeks. And I just wanted to ask you a specific question. What tips can you give our young singers to memorize a school? And also um, about languages, we, we also talk about languages. What is is it important for the singers to to learn the languages to speak the languages? I seem to ask this question all the time because when we had our conversation, it, you had a lot to say, and which is which was so interesting and so helpful. And so I wanted to just you to share it today with us as well. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, I'm just lucky <laughs> because, <laughs> because yeah, I just learned the role in in just incredibly fast in, in a, absolutely in two weeks i can memorize like 500 pages that i think it's crazy my husband says that i'm not normal so <laughs> i agree with him <laughs> probably I'm, uh, probably you all are right and i'm not normal i'm not normal <laughs> So um, um, it's why I like to make all these debuts because, you know, uh, there was also one year I remember that I did nine new roles. Nine. Yeah, it was record. It was crazy, I know. But yeah, I did. Um, and about, I can say the way I, I uh, study. So first of all, when open new, I always like to choose a um, good recording and to listen from the beginning to the end. And this because um, it's very important to have the total idea of opera, the music, hmm? how arias are made and duets and uh, concertato and everything. It's very important because if you just open the score and start or only studying like this without knowing how is the music it will take just too long time it's impossible hmm? so i always take a beautiful recording and i like to listen like let's say twice hmm? i will listen from the beginning to the end to have the total idea of what's going on <laughs> and yeah. then and then i start studying i always study alone I never go with the pianist uh, to start uh, studying from the beginning, no. I go and um, I meet pianists only when, Ricardo, I'm sorry, I know, but I... <laughs> and uh, I go, I go when I know the role, okay? So, and I, when I'm ready to sing from the beginning to the end, like, and uh, what I do is, first of all, I like to mark my, you know, I love it. That process is the top. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to mark everything with a marker and uh, yellow. And then um, it's very important to uh, understand what is written because um, you don't have to just memorize it will take too long time only memorizing without knowing what phrase means okay and what meaning meaning let's say like this okay so if you know meaning it's it's faster so yeah. it's why it's why the next question that you say that if it's important to speak many different languages yes let's say um i don't know how many <laughs> but let's say italian for i think i'm almost convinced about this that 
an opera singer had to know Italian because because um, I mean most of operas are in Italian. Of course, if if you sing this kind of my repertoire, let's say like this, I don't speak about Wagner, of course. Um, but yeah, you know, Italian it's very important. But exactly, and also right after it will be also easier because if you speak Italian, okay, and if you know what are you singing, also you will already be able to interpret it, and and it will not be like let's say like this. First of all, I have to memorize and then I will be interpreting. No, it will be already all together. Yeah. You will memorize, but you will memorize already knowing what you are memorizing. So this is very, very important to know what are you saying and to not memorizing without knowing what you have, what are you saying? Because sometimes I have to say to my students, you, you know what are you saying? Yes. And I see on face that it's not like that. And so I can hear these because because they are not interpreting. So it's why I say like, OK, now I tell you what are you, what are you saying. You think they are thinking in a different way, right in one. Sentence. So I see how big is the difference when you know and when you don't know. So this is this is, let's say I First of all, I listen and then I open score and I start with piano, of course, because I, as Ricardo say, said, I also was playing piano and I also was playing flauto, flute. So uh, that, that also helped me because the, the school that I was doing when, with flauto, it was more difficult than the school that I was doing with uh, with vocal, with singing, because I was doing two schools. So it's why I I was doing giving all the exams in a flauto school, and then I was just bringing uh, the results in the <laughs> because it was difficult. So it's why um, uh, when you know solfeggio. Let's say like this. I don't know how it's solfeggio in English. How is solfeggio? It's it's Tony it's Tony Sofa. It's Tony Sofa, I think. Am okay. I right? But, no, I think I think the sol solfez, the French word, is quite international. The solfez, the French yeah, one. Yeah, it's so, Maestro. It's Tony Sofa in English, I think. So if you know that very well, you will for sure you will be able to study alone, and the study process will be also faster. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, Fran Francisco, would you like to uh, pass to your question about the transition in repertoire? Of course. I think we spoke a little bit about, about um, when to say no, when to say yes. Um, but your repertoire is very varied. Um, you sing everything from Donizetti to Rossini. And as you said, you just did Lombardi, Luisa Miller, Taviata. Um, what are the keys to maintaining a healthy voice while doing all of this variation of repertoire? And another thing that goes thrown around a lot is FAC. Um, and what do you think that the idea of FAC sometimes pigeonholes singers into performing a limited repertoire and not exploring possibilities? So, um, I think the, the most, and the, um, let's say the, the most uh, important word and for um, not work, but the way uh, to keep your voice healthy in a different, different repertoires is to say everything with your voice. So this is you have to adjust your voice uh, on uh, uh, not adjust, adapt to the repertoire that you are singing. Just because you are singing lyrical dramatical role, you don't have to start pushing and screaming and making voice bigger and heavier and rounder. No, you have to sing with. If you sing a Rossini, you don't have to make your voice lighter and small to do all that. No, 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 no. You have to sing with your voice. Yeah. So every, everything, everything, you have to sing with your voice. And if you will, 
sing with your voice, your voice will be healthy. This is exactly what I do. If I sing Rossini and if I am able to pass in a few weeks from Rossini to Verdi to Puccini and to come back to Donizetti and to go again with Rossini and Verdi and Puccini, and it's only because I always sing with my voice. I never make fake, let's say. Hmm? I never adapt my voice in a fake way to the repertoire that I'm singing in. This is very, very, very important because like that, only that you will be able to change repertoires very often and also to be able to sing such different repertoires very often. And also, um, I think it's good to, I mean, if this is exactly what I do. So, um, actually, I, for me, it's diffi difficult to understand, uh, uh, for example, that they, they choose to sing only, only one direction, you know, because, because I'm so curious and, uh, and I like to discover new things. And I like to discover myself also in new things. So it's why um, I'm not cutting myself from something because no, 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 that no, that other style. No, the style we can always look how in Belcanto. We can learn what we can do in Belcanto and what we can do in Belcanto. We, what we have to do in Rossini and what is completely out of style. But all these things, it, it, it's possible to learn. So not just because you don't know how to do, you have to not. And, you know, so I think it's always good to vary, to, to, to try to, yeah, to go out from Action and to try to discover it's I think it's also funny otherwise I mean if I if I I remember that one one year um, I had like five or six contracts of Elisir d'Amore and I remember that after that year I don't wanted to sing Elisir d'Amore never again <laughs> because I was like no way, I am not going to sing this opera, never again, because I, I was like, ah! I was getting crazy. Uh, so it's why, you know, because I, I like to variate, I like to study and add, and now um, I have already 37 uh, big, uh, important roles in my repertoire. So I think it's, it's a lot, but because, wow. because I like I like to add and uh, discover and also to make myself in a challenge. I like challenges. It's, it's interesting. <laughs> I, I just want to add one thing. Um, I mean, because as, as young students, they're taught that they are either a lyric soprano or a lyric mezzo or a dramatic soprano. How does a young student go about exploring that repertoire if they don't, if, if their teacher is telling them you're a lyric soprano, you will only sing lyric soprano. You'll never sing a Tosca or let's say a Turandot for, for like, a, how does, how do they go about that? Yeah, this is very difficult. This is very difficult. Um, the only thing that I can say that happened to me and then maybe somebody can follow my example that maybe will be good because it's important to not be scared Okay, and I remember, I tell you now, um, until, until I went to conservatory, I had my teacher, no, that would be a summit that I, no, I nominated before. Then I arrived to the conservatory and before going in conservatory, I already was solist in our opera house. It's a beautiful Tbilisi opera house. It's a gorgeous opera house, huge one. I was already solist there. I was already singing there uh many important and the main roles i i was already winner of all the competitions that i did and uh, this just for example eh? 
And, uh, and also I did uh, a recital before going to the conservatory um, exam. And I did all Lucia, Sonnambula, Puritani and everything. I was 17. Then I arrived to the conservatory and my teacher, unfortunately, she was not teaching in conservatory that period because she was still too young. And uh, um, they gave me a teacher. Okay, and I went to the first lesson. After one hour that I was uh, doing this uh, lesson, I finished that I was completely without voice. And that thing never and never happened with me before. Never. Because the, the, the way she was trying to, she was telling me to do things, it was completely opposite of what I was doing. Okay, she was telling me, okay, you have to push low, oh, this, you know, and, and uh, because she was telling, I mean, I was doing, I was 17 and I was just doing, I was following my new teacher because in my opinion, in conservatory, you know, it was great. So I had to grow up still. And of course I had to learn. I was not arrogant. Okay. I was open to learn more. And so what she was telling me, I was doing that. And after one hour, I went out and I was completely, completely without voice. And I remember what I did exactly in that second. I went to the director of conservatory. Okay. Doc, doc, doc. Can I come, please? Ah, Nino, come, of course. And I said, or you will change my teacher right now, or I will never come back in conservatory anymore. I said, I will never go back to her. I'm so, I'm without voice. And this never happened with me. So, or you will change or please cut out. I will, I don't need conservatory, okay? I was feeling much better before. So, or you will change now or anyway, I will not go back to her anymore. So you decide, okay? But or like this or nothing. Can you hear me? Is there, yes, yes, very well. Yeah. You, yeah. you were frozen for a second. Oh. And, uh, and so um, they changed my teacher and then they, they, then I went to other teacher and he was a tenor and, uh, and it was wonderful. So this is the, why I said this story. You don't have to be scared to say when you feel bad. You don't have to be scared when you feel bad. You just have to refuse. You have to say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do this again because I don't feel healthy. That's it. And I remember that I did this. I said, I will never go back with her anymore. I'm sorry. I don't need your conservatory if I have to lose my voice here. And they changed. And then I studied there and I was happy because the, my next teacher that was Tana, he was wonderful. So. This is, it's not easy, it's not easy to refuse, it's not easy to be, you know, like this with the teacher, but if, if the alternative is to lose your voice, you have to. Absolutely. You are life proof that uh, a career comes not only because of talent, but needs also strong personality and diplomacy and many other virtues except talent. Yeah, I think Maestro so. Estrada, we need to hear your voice, I think. Not I think, mm, I'm sure. No, I, but, I have to vocalize a little bit before. Frozen? No, you're here. Okay. I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm vocalizing. <laughs> Wait. No, no, I was I was very, very, very attent um, with a big, amazing attention listening to Nino that, um, of course, we need, I mean, we know everyone that she is a great singer, but now we see also that uh, she is a great maestra also because uh, she said things 
that uh, to me are very obvious, but uh, to a lot of singers or to uh, the new generations or people trying to to enter in the market, let's say, it seems it's not as, as if you are a dramatic voice, you don't need to be pushing all the time or screaming uh, as a mad. I mean, the orchestration many, many, many times in this kind of operas are, is very not so, so tough, is not so density. So you, you can sing piano, so this is very true. Also, the importance of the words, of course, it helps. As she, you, you said that uh, it helps if, if you know the, the language, of course, because then you, you can give a lot of chorus. I mean, it's not, a, it's not a matter that you sing from the beginning to the end one opera. Okay, very good, complimenty. Um, you can do this mathematically while you're a singer, see. But the difference is what are you telling to us with this music the composer wrote? So it's something that has to come from you. Uh, is the, the the idea, the intention that you have to find in the words? Then this it gives an amazing high difference in your interpretation. You go to this to to this, no? Although you sing everything, so this is very important. This is very important. Also, another idea you you, you gave Nino, very interesting. Uh, I always remember, of course, have not uh, Cavalier. Of course, she was telling all, all uh, their students, um, please, please, first you have to sing the areas, sing the areas. If you feel that it goes to you, if you feel that you can sell yourself, if you see that it matches to your aim, to your energy, to your everything, then study the whole opera. But if you feel that it's not going in a, in a way, whatever, whatever, I mean, you can sing, but you don't feel, then... Yeah. Leave it, leave it, leave it, absolutely. Because there is a huge repertoire you can sing for sure, no? And um, yeah, this is, this. I mean, well, we, we think that maybe this is a very logical thought, but um, there are little people that has to go in this idea, no? And it's not, it's not, it's not easy, of course. You, you had, you had, an, well, you have an amazing career and then you, 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 you live these things every day and you, you know, perfectly this but for the uh, young people sometimes they want to sing this repertoire because someone told you or they feel that they are lyricals or is a tenor lyric i have to sing this <laughs> well well try but if you if you don't feel don't do it i mean go to but another thing because Why? because because at the end we are going on stage so nobody can force you to sing something yes. if you don't want to sing because at the end, you have to go on stage and you have to put your face there and your voice and it will be you performing. And so at the end, the most important are us. We have to decide what we want to do and what we want to do. Somebody can suggest, somebody can say, no, you will be wonderful, but you have to decide if you will be wonderful. Because then you have to go on stage. <laughs> That's Absolutely. it. Is this? Is this? So is this? Yeah. So my question, because I talk a lot always. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Spanish. I cannot. <laughs> so uh, well, I think the Spanish and, and 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 Georgian people we are very close, very 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 close. Same, same. <laughs> very same. Okay. Uh, my question. Well, my question is, um, which singers? Uh, are a little bit your references, which singers you were uh, listening when you were young, you still are young, of course, but when you, you were a little bit younger <laughs> and you were starting your career, um, which singers for you, I don't know how to say it, 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 it they, they open a word or, or some ideas that then you, you keep it in your career and know you always, in a way, you keep on mind and uh, they helped you to, to be the singer you are. Joan Sutherland. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Always her. It's like, I don't know. I just love her. <laughs> I just love her so much. And um, yeah, I always search for her recordings. It's something mm -hmm. that I just, I just love her. I just love her so much. So it's nice. short. But <laughs> it's it's <laughs> <fair>. <laughs> So you are very selective. 
this yeah. one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to 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 add on that question, if you don't mind, um, your feet, your your song with so many singers, of course, all the big names. I mean, we can count the the list is endless. Which colleague did you f f had like a special moment with on stage? Would you a special moment? What what special moment do you remember that still remains with you today on stage with a colleague? Um, there is no only one. There is no <laughs> only one. But maybe Leon. Because uh, I remember then um, I was doing one of my first uh, Rigolettos. Uh, no, no, I mean, first Rigoletto in Europe, okay? And in the past, we did in past uh, Rigoletto. This is wonderful recording that there, there is also on YouTube, and I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. And um, I remember that uh, at the end, um, in finale, Okay, I was singing and uh, I remember that I was crying because it was so moving, you know, this uh, la yes. it's yes. such a moving moment. And I remember that at the end of opera, okay, he, he saw me and he said, you were crying? And I said, yes. And he said, wow. He said, you are a real artist and i i i remember because because you know um this kind of words can somebody can think that um yeah yeah of course and uh but when you are so young, you know and you are doing one of the most important plays because you know doing rigoletto verdi in verdi opera festival in parma yeah the, and and I remember, um, I remember that moment very like a, a special one, because such person telling me such thing in in such a occasion, you know, it, it was a, so this I can, I can say many, but this is the yeah. first that I remember, and um, yeah, this, this, uh, that was one. That was one. Of course, I mean, I, I I was lucky. Because, as I said, for me also, um, what what I always try on stage, you know, always when I'm on stage, I'm always trying to give some emotion, you know. And I, the best compliment for me is when um, members of audience they come and say, "Oh my God, I had goosebumps." Yeah. Yeah. And I was crying, and I was moved, and all these things for me are the most, most, most important because yeah. this means that what I was feeling. Because sometimes I move, I'm I'm moving on stage, and I really mm. have to be careful because in some very dramatical moments and touching moments, also for me, um, you know, um, I have to. Careful. And I remember that in that moment, I had to be careful because, as you know, my mother, she is not alive anymore. She is not with us since 17 years. And, uh, you know, and singing that phrase for me, it was so moving, mm. you know, going in cello and mother and everything. Yeah. And I remember I was crying. And and also that when he said I, it was it was just so moving. And uh, it's very important when you feel something and you give that feeling and the emotions also to the audience and also to the colleagues and when they, when they understand. This is very important. So it means yeah. that it was not only, let's say, uh, interpretation because you have to interpret it. Yeah, yeah. But it was real. It was something that you felt and yeah. everybody saw. And uh, for me, this is more important. And it's not, it's not going on stage and making the lesson of uh, how, you know, how good you sing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. No, I think nobody cares. Like, yeah. I mean, when I, I'm in audience and when I see some colleagues and they are singing and 
they are trying to do the you know, to, to know to show that uh, their technique is so great and galaratura and everything and nothing is coming i'm like okay bravissima ma give me something <laughs> Because I have feeling that I'm on a lesson of uh, good singing. <laughs> yeah. So this is right way of singing, you know. So yeah, for me it's not not uh, not interesting, and um, yeah. and it's why I always try to give my heart yeah. and put on stage to yeah. for for a more for you know because audience they come to the theater. Because they they are searching for some uh, strong emotions. Yeah, and I must have, say, and we have to give them that emotions because they are coming for that and they yeah. they want that. And the opera is magical, and we are so lucky to 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 be inside. Yeah, it's I so must say, wonderful. I'm... I love this job. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean seriously, Nino. I wanted just to compliment you, really. Everything you do on stage come across. I was very lucky to listen. I was sitting right next to your face on stage oh. in Verona when you did Rosina <laughs> with Maestro Luci, and then he did the anchor as well. It was spectacular. So everything you say, it really comes across on stage. I just wanted to compliment you on that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Maria? And Nino. Uh, I don't know, can you hear me? Because I had a small uh, yeah, yeah. frozen moment from my side. <laughs> it's a bit problematic today. So we will pass from the artistic life. We will touch a bit the personal part of your life. Uh, you are a wife and a mother of a young child and a baby, your baby Elena. And I would like to ask you, also on behalf of many female singers who are agonizing about how to maintain a work-life balance how do you manage to maintain a work-life balance in your uh, uh, everyday living and uh, what are the challenges of being an international artist and a mother so the, the most important word is calm <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, calm this is the most important thing and to manage everything with calm <laughs> so, this is very important so um you know um as i said from the beginning i always wanted two kids now so i always wanted to have a family and uh, um and i feel so grateful that life gave me that uh, th this opportunity to be mother and um and yeah and also already pro from the first it's easier, I have to say, because I already know what I have to do. But I remember with Alessandro, uh, of course, I was studying to how to manage, what to do. But still, um, I was, I was like, I was calm because I was saying, I want this. I wanted this. And thanks God, I have this. So now it's nothing impossible. So let's just choose for the right ways how to manage all this. And so um, also, also I think um, I'm lucky also because exactly like Alessandro, also Elena, they are um, very good kids. They are not crying before for no reason let's say like this you know they are not capriccioso i don't know how is capriccioso in uh, in english uh, capricious yeah. Capri yeah they are not doing capricious <laughs> they are cry only if they are hungry <laughs> or, or or they have to sleep <laughs> oh in that case they are really crying okay but in that two cases and so and also because um i'm not a um, such person that says no, I can't, I'm tired, um, I can't do this, it's too difficult. I'm not that kind of person, okay? I'm completely opposite. I'm like, yes, I can do it, I'm strong, I'm not tired. Even when I'm tired, I'm saying that I'm not tired. And, uh, and, and, and I, I need to do, uh, you know, also 
Also, Elena was one week and I already started to do online lessons because I don't want to leave my students alone for long period. Okay, and I remember that I was asking to my mother, mother-in-law, like, can you help me? And to my babysitter, like, can you help me? And also to my husband, like, can you walk, please, with Elena? And I do this lesson. And I have a very, I think, good way to organize things. You know, I, I, I do like... <laughs> like, my brain never stops thinking, never. It's like... <laughs> whole day and of course it's not easy because I remember um, I traveled with Alessandro for six years until he went to the school all around the world uh, alone because also my husband he was working he couldn't come with me and uh, with Alessandro I don't wanted to bring a babysitter with me and so I was finding the babysitter in the places where I was arriving and the opera houses um, very, many often they help us because they know people that uh, uh, can help us so I was traveling alone and uh, of course it was not easy but still because um, I was so happy to be to the, that I was mother and also I was in good shape and I was able to sing that I was not refusing just because it was not easy Okay, and I was saying, yes, it's difficult, but it's not impossible. So I have to do. If something is not impossible, you don't have to not do because it's difficult. So, of course, it's not easy, but I, I, I know how to manage. I know how to manage. I'm outside. It's why, for example, I'm not accepting many interviews. I'm not accepting live interviews with the TV that I, I receive from Georgian TV every day, um, requests for interviews, live interviews, or, um, you know, uh, the, but I know that that kind of things will bring my time from my kids. So it's why if I'm working, uh, I do not accept them kind of things because I know that that time I can use for them. So it's everything about organization, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's so beautiful and it's so wonderful uh, when you finish singing and then you go on. Uh, you have waiting and uh, it's just so amazing. And also the body, I think our body uh, learns and um, now, since Elena is in burn, I mean, I'm sleeping five hours a night, hour, let's say like this, but I'm totally okay. <laughs> so, because body uh, knows that it's okay, you can survive and feel good and uh, it's not necessary more. <laughs> so, but, you know, it's, it's just so wonderful that um, I always say you don't have to uh, sacrifice family for career. Because uh, because career is wonderful and it's a successful singer and it's all to be to to be loved and to receive a lot of flowers and uh, brava and uh, everything. But then uh, when you will all the I think uh, you know all the things will be not there anymore. Uh, then you will feel alone so it's why since I was kid I said like I want to sing I want to travel I want to be a successful opera singer I want to be a diva mm. but I would like to have your kids because the real um, reason of life and uh, sense of our life are our kids so everything, everything else is secondary. Let's say like this. And uh, that is really precious. It's really precious. What you say is nothing on success as mother that you can have. It's it's really cool. <laughs> it's really beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It's really precious what you said, and uh, it touches me deeply personally. <laughs> Thank you.
Maestro, it's your turn again. 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 So <laughs> I, again. Say, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know very well this that you were telling about organization yeah. with kids. <laughs> Sometimes it's like crazy. You don't know, I but know. you are right. You find a way, always you find a way. And um, I always say that the human being, we have a capacity, ability to adapt to every circumstance amazingly. So always, although it will seem very difficult, we find a way to, to manage everything. Yes. 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 <laughs> you know, like, like this. Tick, 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 tick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then it's easy. Yeah, it's not easy about this. So my question. So you you told us very clear that I mean you are one of the singers that that says no, <laughs> that is not so easy. It's not so easy. But um but, you know, <laughs> but of course, I mean um, it's not easy, but it's good for your career in the long term, let's say in the long distance. Um so we know this. I know this that I mean you're taking care of all, all your decisions, but I'm asking you, maybe you will tell me in 20 years or in 30 years, I don't know. But which roles you would like to sing? I mean, will roles that you haven't sung just now or, or, or till now? Um, and maybe, maybe, maybe tomorrow, I don't know, but <laughs> you see, did you feel still ready or, or you feel, but, um, which roles you, you, you would like to sing, uh, in the future? Okay. So, um, the one of the many requests that I received after Lombardi, the most of them was for Butterfly. And, mm. and I and there was four different super important like one of the most important opera houses four and I refused because I really think that um, I did for more than 15 years Bel Canto okay and after that I decided that I could move to more lyrical roles because I felt that my voice become more lyrical and now I'm lyrical, okay? And there are still so many beautiful roles to sing before Butterfly, you know? So the thing to do is saying, don't accept something that you know, then, then you will be required to sing that role all time. And I was meaning exactly Butterfly because I'm, I was sure that if I would accept that, then there was no way to go back. Okay, so it's why I refused four of them. And I said, I'm sorry, I will be singing that role. I will be singing that role because I'm in love with that role. Because I, the, the, that role is um, one that, that makes me cry whole time. When I hear butterfly, I cry. It's out of <laughs> It's just like you put an I, I put a cry. And uh, it's exactly why I'm not accepting because I really think that now I'm discovering this new repertoire. And I, it's just wrong to sing butterfly tomorrow. So it's why I refuse. But Butterfly will be the role that I will sing, okay? And is the role that I love most and I will be singing. But this will not happen in next three years and four, four years. So I said that we can start planning <laughs> from four years, but not before. <laughs> but, I, I thought when, when, when they had asked you, I thought they were going to say something like Lady Macbeth or like Stifelio or like Nabuk or something like that. So I, I said, now I'm butterfly and I'm refusing Tosca. 
because um, I really think that there are like huge words of opera that I can sing now. And I really don't have to sing butterfly. I will be, but not now. And this, mm -hmm. because I'm afraid, or I think that butterfly is not. No, no, no. It can be for me, but nobody will tell me and propose and give me anymore the roles that I can still sing before butterfly. So this is don't do the step more long than you can, you know, because then there is no way to go back. You are already too forward. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's better to go with calm and discover and the sing and learn and uh, have fun and then arrive and course about it. Well, thank you so much, Nino. My God, you you've touched so many, so many uh, good uh, points. So I'm gonna go to the last question, which is: uh, We all um, have been struggling with this COVID thing that has been going on. Thank God, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Finally, the opera houses are opening. Even here in Germany, they just announced that uh, we're gonna be singing with an audience, which is great. But Going back a little bit to the tough times for all the singers, uh, how did you deal with the cancellations of the contracts? And as well, what would be your advice to the young singers who are pursuing this career as we've been through this darkness? And what would be your advice to them as well? Yeah, so for sure it's a very difficult times. And um, um, I had COVID, but thanks God um, with no symptoms. I was pregnant. And um, I discovered that I had <laughs> during my pregnancy with the uh, uh, blood test. So I've been I've been a uh, lucky one, let's say. Like. But of course, it's um, it's dangerous. It's a dangerous uh, thing. And, um, we really have to be careful, and we really have to think first of all on safety and mm -hmm. on health. Um, and this, of course, first of all. But then, um, what I see, what, what I saw now, uh, and what I wish that to, to see in all around the world, that after one year without singing, you know, almost one year, with all the contracts canceled, canceled and uh, yes, I was... So, you know, for me, it was not so bad, let's say, this, because fortunately, I, I could stay home and healthy. With the end. But still, I, I, I was lucky enough to go in and to sing One Traviata um, in October when I was seven months pregnant. So I still did that Traviata, and it was wonderful. Um, but, yeah, see all the and uh, we all lost job and of course it's uh, it's, it's so bad it's just devastating for for so many people especially for the young singers that they were starting in that moment and they had their first contracts and they lost them so it's just so sad and it's it's so bad and i i'm i i really so understand them they they are passing and such difficult period because they had opportunity and they lost that opportunity but not that fault you know it's because and it's not there and i really hope that opera houses will they will open again because i see that it's possible to be open and i saw this because um in Monte Carlo, when I did uh, I Lombardi, one day ago, we had an audience and we were tested every week with a, a test. Okay, and so everything, and we were distanced and um, uh, tested and uh, all, always sanifying and, uh, and also audience, they were distanced. 
Okay, now I'm here in Madrid and I see the same. We are tested twice and we are protecting ourselves and we are singing and rehearsing six hours a day with a mask. Okay, and in, uh, in Monte Carlo we did the same. The first rehearsal where we talk out was when we had to sing with the mask. And here will be the same. Okay, but if this is the things that we have to do to be able to work and to be able to go on stage, we are open to do, we are happy to do. And of course, sometimes we are completely out of breath because with the mind and moving and jumping and the singing, sometimes we are like, but, but it's okay, it's okay. We still are happy and nobody says nothing because we feel lucky that we are there and we are working and opera is open so the thing that i would like to add to all the opera house directions please try to open and test singers test all the members okay and uh, do all the safety but open because I mean, we need to work and young singers, they need to work. They need to have a chance to go, the possible opportunity to go on stage, to start somehow, because if our houses will be closed, we will, so then music will die. Because online, it's not the same. It's just not the same. We all know that it's not the same. And so, um, it's very difficult. I know it's it's just dramatic. It's a dramatic situation. But but the only way is to go out from this dramatic situation is to have opera houses open. So like this, everything slowly will go back to normal, and we will be able to work to to perform. All the members of the Opera House in the backstage, how many people are working, you know, and in and in a, in the Sartoria and everywhere. So this is life. We need that. And um, also the technical advice to the young people, uh, study, 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 study. And if you have time, free time, because unfortunately you lost contract and you are not working, Study new roles, okay? So like this, once every everything will be finished, and I really hope and cross fingers that this will be soon because we will be vaccinated and some one day this will be all finished, okay? Then you will have the roles, few roles that you know that they are perfect for you, they will be ready. And so if you will have opportunity and uh, some theater will ask you, so can you sing this? You will say yes, because you already learned before. So don't lose time. Study, 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 study all the time. And also warm up technically. This is very important. Thank you so much. You just reminded me of my story. I mean, I remember when I met you in Peso, it was the same thing. <laughs> yes. And it's, it felt so good to hear those words again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how sweet. He was so sweet. Yeah. Sorry, we, we just lost Maria. Maria yeah. I hope she, <laughs> she has technical That's... problems today. It's a, it's a nightmare. No, poor. Maybe we'll wait a little bit until she comes back. So, uh, Nina, what, what, what's next from here? After you finish that production you're doing now, what's next for you? What's, what's, oh, what is planned? I have few recites. And I have, as you know, now I'm doing also master classes that I like so much. This is like, I didn't know that I liked so much teaching. It's just great. I discovered a new thing. And I, <laughs> and yeah, I just love teaching and I love doing master classes. I did the first one now a few weeks ago before coming here in Brescia. And now after this, right after I have recitals and then I have also master class in Brussels. Yeah. And uh, yes, and then uh, we are now thinking about a very nice project 
but it's not uh, still it's not confirmed, so I can't say. But the next one that it's already announced it's Le Peche du Père at uh, in Napoli, and I really hope that um, it will remain scheduled. <laughs> okay, so For sure. <laughs> let's cross. <laughs> Let's cross fingers. It's very important. For we, sure. We all need this. We all need this yes. because yeah. this is like. And what I saw also um, in uh, in Barcelona that uh, we singers stage we were so happy and to be on stage to sing. Yeah. And then I was seeing also the faces of the audience. And it was incredible because it was half full. Okay, it was half full because they could they could uh, hospitate only half. But they were so happy that they were doing like ovation, like hall was hall, completely full. Oh, wow! <laughs> it was incredible because they, they were so loud and happy that we had feeling that hall was full. So. They also need this. Also, audience, they miss this. So we need, we need. So let's really hope and uh, think positive. Not be positive. Eh? In this in this period, it's not good. But think positive. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Nino. <laughs> Much more with us. That's the best uh, way to end uh, a wonderful conversation. To think. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Thank yes. You. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes we can yeah. hear you, my dear. <laughs> it's quite <laughs> tricky tonight. Yes? Yeah. I apologize so much for this. I, it's something we can't control <laughs> uh, for the inconveniences with the technology, but uh, I said that there is no better way to... Thank you. I said that there is no better way to end a beautiful conversation than to be thinking positively. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, I would like to thank you on behalf of all the AD team for being with us today because we know well that you don't give interviews very often. So it was a special honor and joy. And we believe that you justified perfectly the title we put in this interview, which was that perfection uh, is where great talent meets very hard work and you're a perfect example of this thank you so thing. much <laughs> thank you thank you it was my pleasure to, to be here and to talk with you and uh, i wish you success and uh, uh, i still i still have problems to hear you perfectly all of you i'm so sorry but uh, to Nino before we leave the panel, because my sound is not so good, I don't wanna, don't wanna ruin this. <laughs> my pleasure, it was an honor, it was an honor, and a special joy. Thank you so much, thank you so much. It was a, absolutely, a, I had a wonderful time. Thank you so much for very interesting questions. And I hope I answered to all of them. And uh, I also- Thank I you very much, thank you. Know. We wish you continued okay. success in your life and in your career. I would like also to thank uh, our partners today, Francisco Salazar from Opera Wire for being with us. Sunny Boyd Ladlady, creative director, and our great maestro, <laughs> Ricardo Estrada, for helping us. Thank you, maestro. My pleasure. <laughs> thank you to all of you. And thank also to all the followers. And um, thank you so much. Absolutely. It was a uh, we were literally hung. <laughs> Absolutely. We were literally hanging from your lips and we, we were receiving many messages from the people that we, they were doing the same. Uh, you were sharing your advice with uh, such a conviction and uh, strong personality. It was lovely. Thank you for everything. Uh, big thanks to our audience. See you next time at Prelude. In the meanwhile, stay well. A big hug from the AD team and Opera Wire. Ciao. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao. Thank you.